Welcome back. We've got another great video for you today. We're going to explore the intricacies of making napalm. Now, napalm is a fascinating substance that was created for war times, and so that's just a little bit different than 99% of the videos you're going to see out there. We're making a substance that is semi-liquid, very burnable, tons of fun, and I'm going to show you six different ways to do it. So let's get started. All right, so here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need some styrofoam. I have a couple of different kinds. This is just your regular styrofoam that comes in whatever box is shipped to you. This is actually insulation for houses that you can get this at any uh, big box store. Maybe a couple of paint stirs to mix things up, something to cut your styrofoam. Also, we've got, this is ABS plastic pipe. Um, you can use whatever size you want. It's just some basic soap. This ivory soap is very inexpensive and does exactly what we need. And this is uh, basically the kind of soap that Grant used in his napalm video. And we're just going to do a slightly different variation on his video. A cheese grater is really helpful for the soap. And then you'll just need some containers to put your napalm in. Additionally, you'll need something to react with all of these things that I've just pointed out. So we've got some acetone, we've got some gasoline, and that is going to be the fun part. So we're ready to pour our chemicals. Acetone tends to spill, so that's why I'm doing it on the floor here. It will also eat through just about anything. So I want to make sure I'm just ready to clean up immediately so that we don't have a problem with the epoxy on the garage floor. We're also going to want some gasoline. You don't need to fill these all the way up but you want enough that you can shove a good amount of material in there. So we're gonna start with the soap because it takes the longest to dissolve in the gasoline. Now when Grant did it, he used some heat to heat up the gasoline. He used the double boiler method, which is pretty safe, but you can actually do it without heat. It creates a slightly different product, but I think you'll be very satisfied with the results. Now I found this awesome cheese grater that's got this little dish on the bottom, and literally we just start shredding the soap. And it goes really quickly. So I didn't mention it, but you want to use the small side as opposed to the large side, just because that gives you more surface area so that it will dissolve more easily in the gasoline. Got that pretty full. Grab one of our paint stirs. Go ahead and get this started moving around. As long as we get the liquid all over the soap, then the reaction can start taking place. And you'll just want to stir it up every few minutes so that it will happen as fast as possible because we want to set things on fire right now. So we've got another one we're going to do right here. This is also gasoline. And then we're going to use this high density foam board here. And I cut it into strips. Just so that we can fit these into the jar. So yeah, it looks like two is all going to be able to fit in there. I won't be able to get another one yet. Anywhere that the gasoline has touched this foam, it'll just start eating it up. And so we'll just make sure we keep an eye on it so we can push more and more foam in there as we go. Now here's our last one that we're going to use with gasoline. We just have just the standard styrofoam that you can get anywhere. Very low density stuff. And you just start dropping it in. Again, once the liquid has touched uh, the styrofoam, it'll start reacting. If you look, you can see the bubbles right now as it's starting to eat that stuff up. So you'll just keep filling this up until it is full, and then you'll just have to check back in in a few minutes and stuff some more in when you get a chance. Now acetone, this is fingernail polish remover. Cut some slices here. Acetone is really powerful stuff, and it's reacting with the chemicals inside of this foam in a fantastic way. Now this is one that might surprise you. I have pre-prepped this material, but what this is, is this is this ABS plastic pipe. So this is used for plumbing applications, and what I had to do, because when you just stick it in here, it'll sit for a long time and not really do much of anything. I had to put it in my miter saw and create all these little shavings. 
that way when we put it in, it can start reacting much more quickly. Once we start dipping this into the acetone, I mean, you can already see that it's reacting. All right, so these are our gasolines. Here's the one with the soap. It's starting to get a little pastier down there. We're gonna have to give it some time but we'll stir it up to keep those reactions continuing. That's the styrofoam. That's really nice. It's already creating a, a goo. We want more of that. All right, and here you can see what's taking place with this high density foam. And so we'll just kind of try and swish that around. Just get as much of this stuff in there as we can. But this takes a little time but it makes a great product. All right, now we've got one more jar of acetone. We're gonna start putting in this styrofoam. And I'm literally just pushing down on it right now and it just feeds right in there. See how quickly it eats that? It's amazing. Isn't that phenomenal? <laughs> Here we are, we've got our finished products. We've got the acetones on this side, we've got the gasolines on this side. Both of these are just your regular packing styrofoam and you can see this one just took as much as I would give it. Absolutely filled up this jar, it was super quick, lots of fun. These ones are the high density foam that we talked about. Again, the acetone just melted down so much quicker that I was able to make more. And then here are the ones that were dissimilar. So this is soap chips and this is the ABS plastic. And so this, you can still see it's kind of chunky. You still got some, some soap chips that have not completely worn all the way down, but it's still gonna burn great. It's gonna be lots of fun. We're gonna set these all on fire now. So we are about to head outside to burn these, but we're gonna prep them. I created just a little wooden base with a piece of sheet metal on top so we can set these on fire reasonably safely. We'll separate them all out and I'd like to get them all burning at the same time. Wow, they're so different. So both of these two right here are just your regular styrofoam. But this one that I'm pulling out right now has the acetone in it as opposed to the gasoline. All right, here we are. We've got our six different kinds of napalm and we're ready to test. Now, one of the questions I get when I talk about napalm is, is it explosive? How safe is this? None of this is explosive. It just burns really well and for a long time. So I'm gonna set these all on fire and we're gonna start a timer as soon as they're all going and we're gonna see how long they burn. That's what I'm talking about, okay. There, there we are. Perfect. Oh, see, now that I figured it out. Awesome. All right, here we go. Let's start the timer. All right, so unfortunately, we actually had to put out the napalm fires that we started. The smoke was so thick and black. As good a relationship as we have with the fire department, we didn't want to call them out here. So, but this, this is something special that I made the other day a very, very special kind of napalm. It's the best burning one yet, and you'll never guess what's in it. If you wanna see a video about how to make the Lego napalm, just let me know in the comments. And until then, let the random happen.